So let's take the time to set up properly. So here I've carved out a corner in my studio and I've put all my tools out here. Sandpaper, brush, mechanical pencil, and if that's all you have, that's fine, just use that. Pencils, this is a an eraser pencil, actually. Eraser, stumps, something to sharpen your pencil with, something to sharpen your eraser pencil with. Paper towel, and here I've clipped my drawing board to my sketchbook. This is the plate. And so here's some of my other studies, arms, hands. You always want to start with your first impression. So think about how much space that is taking up on in the window. So just kind of scribble along following some tilts and angles. Just get your very first impression. Keeping your lines light and loose, long and fuzzy. And just keep going around and around and around until you know, you're starting to, to see something in there. Draw from the mist, as one of my teachers used to say. So once you get it organized a little bit, then you can go back and you can say, okay, let's look at these tilts and angles a little more slowly. Let's go over them one at a time and get the lines just a little bit darker. So when I do something like that, I'm actually looking at the negative space there. And when I'm doing that, I'm actually looking at the negative space there. Now we're gonna kick into high gear. So here I'm mapping out some landmarks. You see here on this cast, the plumb and level lines are no longer plumb and level, but they're actually tilts and angles. So now I'm putting in these guidelines and I can check my measurements. The next thing we're gonna do is triangulation. See, these lines have to be parallel because they are in the original. This, 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 and this, they're all parallel to each other. And they're perpendicular to this one. So get those lined up at some point, um, at the point where you're ready to start reorganizing your tilts and angles to get them a little bit closer to the original.
Okay, so here we're going to kick into high gear again. So let's talk about triangulation here. So you have your original on the left, and here you are copying it. So triangulation is you're going to pick an important place in your composition, and another one, and possibly a third. Let's do the chin down here. And then you're going to drive a straight line through those three points. So yeah, you're gonna make a triangle, okay? So for some reason, we're really capable of measuring, with our eye, we're able to measure um, really well triangles. And we can really see tilts and angles when we make our shapes into triangles. So then you do the same thing on your drawing, really lightly, you don't have to press hard. It'll all get rubbed in later. And you connect those three dots like that, yeah. And then you look at this one and this one, you say, okay, are those triangles the same? And they're not. Right? So this one needs to come up, which tells me that her face needs to be a little narrower. So I can move that line in. Then this one has to come in a little bit. This one has more of an angle. This one can come in a little bit more. Right? Her mouth just got a little too big there. And it's, this is how you measure again after your first impression. Just give it one more thoroughness to it. Remember Hegel and his dialectic theory where it takes about three adjustments to get things right? So that's Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, born in 1770, died in 1831, and he was a German philosopher. And so I think about him a lot when I draw because I think, okay, that was my first impression. Now I'm gonna go do it again. I'm gonna do my triangulation, get it that much better. So let's do another triangulation. Let's go from, let's say, let's go from here, where these intersect, and let's go to here. Drive a straight line through those two. And now we have this triangle. So we're do it over here, here, to here, to here. That looks pretty good, actually. So then I have an extra line that I can measure these two. And you see here on this shape, this needs to be a little fatter. So I'm always discovering things that I can adjust when I do the triangulation. So now you wanna go in and you want to darken those lines a little bit more. Let's 
still keeping them kind of fuzzy, not carving them into the paper, because they're hard to erase once you carve into the paper. Let's kick into high gear again and get this done. Work a few lines here and there, moving around the entire composition. This is different from finishing one feature at a time. The advantage of drawing all the parts at once is that the image comes into focus slowly and you'll see the relative measurements work off each other. This reminds me of my first teacher in Italy, Otello Chiti. He used to despair watching me draw. He'd say, you Americans, starting with the details, that's not how it's done in classical drawing. Draw from the big shapes to the little shapes. So the second part of the drawing is the rendering. You'll take the information from the second plate and you'll put it right on top of your first drawing, which is called the envelope. And this second part is called the rendering. I'm using the same pencil, it's still an HB. I'm just gonna block in all the shadows. So after you get your shadows all blocked in, then you want to go and you want to stump that graphite right down into the divots of the paper. Keeping the transitions where that shadow shape ends kind of soft like you just kind of go over it a little bit with the stump, go right past that edge a little bit, right? And you've got all this graphite on your stump and you can just pull it across the paper here. Let's kick in the high gear again. So here I'm starting to erase some of those construction lines. You can just take your eraser, put it to a nice point like that, and go in there and just pick up little tiny amounts of material with the tip of the eraser. And if you can't see it, it doesn't know it's there either. And then rub it back down with the paper towel. It should almost completely disappear. Make some final adjustments here and there. At the bottom of my paper, I've created a value scale going from the darkest value to the lightest value in five steps. So you want to get your drawing to the point where every shape is a specific value. Like you'll have your shadow shape and then you'll have the core shadow and then you'll have a dark light and then you'll have a middle light, and then you'll have your light light. So that's five values. And every shape will be a value. You wanna get it organized like that before you do your final rendering. Here you can see each value is a distinct shape.
for the final touches, get a very hard pencil like a 2H and sharpen it like that and go in and do those really light half tones in between your dark lights and your middle lights or your shadows and your dark lights. And just sort of like burnish or stump that little bit of graphite in to the paper. See the 2H is such a hard pencil that it'll barely leave any darkness behind, just enough to make that transitional value. For example, here, where this very light half tone defines the eyelid, that's where you would use this kind of a pencil at the end. And here's the plate finished.